Hey folks, uh, Friday, May 29th, uh, actually recording this on uh, Saturday at uh, uh, 1 a.m. Uh, I'm in Waynesboro, Waynesboro? Yeah, Waynesboro, Virginia. And uh, uh, what an amazingly interesting day today was. Uh, it started yesterday after I did my blog. Uh, Hannah and I sat down and read uh, this book I bought her in England. It's called uh, The Adventures of Young Jack Sparrow. Uh, Jack Sparrow, if you know the Pirates of the Caribbean, and it's this wonderful story of uh, how Jack Sparrow got his first uh, ship and the barnacle. And I had a great time. Hannah and I have been spending a lot of time reading the book, uh, taking turns reading paragraphs. Everything was great. And then I headed out to the Vancouver Magic Circle International Brotherhood of Magicians Ring Number no. 92 uh, meeting. Uh, it was great to see uh, uh, some old friends I hadn't seen in a while. A uh, person to note was a fellow by the name of Dale Brown. I haven't seen Dale in over a decade. And there he was. Uh, uh, we reminisced, talked about old times, uh, did a few magic tricks, and uh, he was great. There was a fellow, Jack Meller, who uh, has just turned 81, and Jack did a performance with the uh, uh, little ninja-sized linking rings in the performance. Uh, uh, Rod Chow did the act that uh, he's working on to uh, uh, take the FISM to the World Competition in Beijing, China. He's going to do great. The act has really improved in the last two months. Um, Oh, and congratulations to Steve Dixon, uh, who won the uh, competition that evening for a sleight of hand. He did a brilliant job, uh, truly in the spirit of the competition. Uh, Jack Chow, uh, Rod's son, won the uh, junior competition, uh, so that was really fun. And then we all headed out uh, uh, to um, Night and Day Diner, uh, late night diner, where I had uh, uh, cheddar cheese and broccoli soup at um, about midnight. And we hung out there till about 1.30 in the morning. By the time I got home, it was about 2 o'clock in the morning. Crawled into bed just a little after 2, and I was wide awake at 5.30 in the morning because it was time to get on the road. Uh, packed at uh, 5.30 for about 6, and by the time uh, we loaded up the car and uh, started to head on the trip, it was about 7 o'clock in the morning. Uh, now, we weren't just going to an airport. Lori and I uh, booked our flights out of Seattle, Washington, SeaTac. So uh, uh, that's about a um, 35, 40-minute drive to the border and then the other side of the border to Seattle, all together two and a half hours of driving. Uh, we were about a half an hour into the drive uh, when I realized I forgot my passport. Yep, uh, passport was back home. What was really fun was that, you know, I just commented on how heavy the traffic was going into the city of Vancouver and that we were going the opposite way, further away from the city. And boy, I was glad we weren't in that traffic, at which point I had to turn around and be in that traffic. Then we took traffic all the way back uh, with Sean's little angry face. It was very special. Uh, I got to the house. Lori ran in, grabbed my passport. We jumped back in the car. And then I drove the other direction, uh, back past all the heavy traffic going the other direction. Deja vu, having just seen it all, you know, an hour ago. Got to the border, uh, crossed the border, and then drove from the border to uh, SeaTac Airport. Uh, got to uh, the uh, car park where you uh, valet park the car and a park and fly. Uh, got into their little shuttle bus. I was almost at the airport when I realized I had left my laptop in the uh, uh, truck uh, in uh, Murphy 14. And so I got to do the round trip on the shuttle bus, uh, got to uh, back to the shuttle station where the uh, valet was. The car was already gone. Uh, the guy told me I had to offload my luggage and then waited for a tip. So I gave him a tip. And then I had to wait for them to get my luggage, uh, the uh, laptop bag. And then they loaded my luggage onto another bus which then took me back out to the airport, and then they unloaded my luggage and asked for another tip. Uh, so that was really uh, great. Um, then uh, uh, cleared uh, the uh, uh, security at the airport, uh, went and had something at Chili's 2. We uh, uh, shared some uh, 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 fajitas, not fajitas, what do you call them? Quesadillas. That's what you call them, quesadillas. And then uh, got on the first of two planes, and uh, I basically uh, do what I always do on a plane. I slept. Uh, first plane was uh, full, but the second plane was pretty much empty. Uh, we flew to St. Louis, Missouri, and then from St. Louis uh, to um, uh, Reagan Airport in Washington, D.C. Uh, got into Reagan Airport. Uh, the rental car, uh, they didn't have one, uh, at least not the one we ordered. And they got this big, fancy Toyota van with the doors that automatically open. It's a huge boat thing. It's really big, uh, which is great. I mean, there's enough room I could sleep in that. And then we uh, drove, and while we were driving, uh, my friend Rich Perkins, who lives in Las Vegas, and uh, 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 used to do all my lighting and the automation on the Norwegian Sky, uh, uh, he phoned and said, hey, Sean, you don't want to be uh, doing a high speed on Highway 81. 
because apparently uh, Rich was driving on the I-81 and decided that 81 was the speed limit. Well, actually, he was doing more than 81 when he got pulled over and got a ticket. Apparently, anything over 80 is reckless driving and includes incarceration uh, and an actual court appearance. Uh, but because he had an out-of-state uh, uh, driver's license, uh, they just gave him a ticket. Isn't that special? Uh, he literally finished uh, telling me this. Uh, I hung up the phone, and uh, we rounded the corner onto I-81. And as we came around the corner, I just slowly slowed down, you know, because I thought it was a, a good idea since Rich had already given us a warning. Literally came around the corner onto the I-81, and there was a policeman sitting right there, uh, but he was occupied with somebody else. Uh, so that was another two hours and 45 minutes of driving. Uh, we left uh, uh, Washington uh, Reagan Airport and drove around the uh, uh, Washington Monument uh, and then headed back out into Virginia and then uh, uh, went through a place, uh, uh, what was it called, Sandborg or something like that. Oh, very interesting. Had these giant beams of light going straight into the sky with these three big white crosses. Oh, so very interesting. Uh, they, they took up the middle of the road. Uh, when you were driving, like you were driving directly at them, and then we just kind of dropped down and went around. Uh, we went past um, all sorts of uh, historical uh, battle scenes like Shenandoah and uh, Woodrow Wilson uh, Rehabilitation Center and uh, his library, presidential library, and now we've arrived in uh, Waynesboro, Waynesboro, uh, Waynesboro, I think it's pronounced, and uh, went to a Waffle House at uh, when we were there. I guess we were there at... Uh, Oh, this isn't the right time. This is, uh, it's much later than that. Uh, one o'clock in the morning is uh, uh, in, uh, in uh, Vancouver. Uh, right now it's 4.30. It's uh, 4.30 in the morning. Yeah, that's what time it is. It's 4.30 in the morning uh, here in uh, Waynesboro. Uh, and I should really go to sleep. Uh, but went to the Waffle House and uh, Rich uh, joined me and Laurie. And uh, I had uh, uh, T-bone steak and eggs because uh, uh, I didn't eat a whole bunch today. Well, I ate lots of nuts, had uh, yogurt, and uh, sat on a plane all day and drank plenty of water. And so I felt kind of keyed up. Oh, and I had two cups of coffee, as you can tell by the uh, uh, rapid speech and the excitement of it all. Uh, tomorrow is just a, a day of going out. We're going to go check out Big Waynesboro. I am saying that right, right? It's Waynesboro? Yeah. Uh, then uh, uh, we're going to go check out the big Charge store. Woo and then we're going to a uh, family barbecue. Uh, Rusty's family's putting on a barbecue for all the people from out of town, and uh, then the next day is the wedding. Uh, how great is that? I'll let you know how it goes, uh, keep you up to date. Uh, but boy, I'll tell you, today was not a day for Sean to travel. I, if my head hadn't been attached to my body, I probably would have forgotten it. Uh, heads in a cloud, thinking other things. Um, mind's been kind of occupied. Uh, just wasn't there. Whole trip. Thank God for Lori being there, because uh, I, um, yeah, probably wouldn't be here at this moment. You guys have a great day. Uh, keep busy. Um, keep well. Most of all, uh, be happy. Ciao for now.